So welcome to a special episode of Power of Bourbon, but yeah. a normal episode of Cocktail or Neat. A little crossover event here. Yeah. So hopefully uh, we've got sound <laughs> and people can hear us. Um, but yeah, we will uh, see how this all works. Um, yeah. First time doing a live stream. So I'm a little nervous. Yeah. I don't know why, because honestly, when we do our takes, like we do it, you don't really edit it too much. Mm -hmm. But knowing there's an option to edit is kind of nice. Yeah. So here we go. <laughs> yep. It's just going to be live and we'll see what happens. And we turned off the AC so we didn't get any background noise. So we might yeah. just like start sweating profusely. <laughs> <laughs> there may be a crying baby in the background from the monitor, but she's been sleeping pretty well lately. <laughs> yep. So, uh, here we go. Tonight, because uh, Chuck is busy uh, in other uh, business stuff that he has to do uh, all around, uh, he's not here. And then Brian, we got an episode coming up here explaining what happened to Brian. Uh, he's still alive, which is good, but uh, he's, a, he's a little busy. Um, and we got mm -hmm. some things coming up to sh share that. So uh, we've got a couple bottles uh, that I bought. Big surprise, I got some new bourbon. Who would have mm -hmm. thought? And uh, so we're going to try them out. So the first one we've got tonight on this thing is brand new from Discovery or uh, from Bardstown, Bardstown. Uh, Bourbon Company, which is Fusion Number no. 5. Mm -hmm. Number 5, all the way up to number 5. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if you guys have not had any Bardstown, I highly recommend it. It is some great stuff. Uh, Bardstown is doing some really cool stuff with collaborations with uh, other stuff with people. Uh, and uh, the Fusion series is their product. So this is a, a mix of a four year, a three year, and then an 11 year. The 11 year is obviously not theirs, uh, but the other two are. And as it gets older and older, they're going to continually to have more of their stuff. It looks like they're going to release their own product uh, mm -hmm. completely in a bottle that's just theirs when all their stuff hits about seven years is what I think they yeah. said. But they've been aging their own stuff in Rick houses. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Well, we got to go there the other day for a little celebration. Yep. We called it a celebration, even though it wasn't on the day of our anniversary. We still counted it as an anniversary yes. celebration. Yeah. Um, had some brunch. It wasn't really brunch. It was lunch. Yeah. It was a lunch date, you know, while Violet's going to daycare, mm -hmm. <laughs> we can run around and do whatever we want. So yep. we drove to Bardstown. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. We drove down there. Um, they've got a great restaurant, a lot of fun. I was able to pick up Discovery number five for Chuck uh, because he can't go without having every version of the Discovery series. Mm -hmm. And then for me, I got Fusion number five here because I've got all the Fusion series. And uh, if you've never been to Bardstown, they've got a vintage bourbon library, which is really cool. So mm -hmm. I finally, since it was our anniversary, I got to treat myself a little bit. I got to have the Old Crow Chessman pour, which was amazing. It was. I even got a little sample. Wasn't yep. that nice of him to share? <laughs> uh, and I was very impressed. I said, well, this, this is worth it. You know, good choice. It was like our way of celebrating. Instead of champagne, you can have a pour of this. Yeah vintage bourbon it was good 
Mm -hmm. When previously we reviewed the, uh, what was it? Uh, Pfeiffer, the, not Pfeiffer. Yeah, the Pfeiffer Pavit XO. XO, that's right. Yeah, yeah which is, so was have, their first single barrel barrel pour or a bottle pour you could do at the distillery, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, the Fusion 5, I think, is probably the best of all the Fusions. So the early ones, 1 and 2, was definitely very young, uh, had some green notes in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you could just tell it was really young stuff. This one is really good. It uh, doesn't have a lot of the grain forward notes. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very caramel and vanilla is starting to come more out. more sugary, yeah, caramel. Yeah, which mm -hmm. you get with the uh, older bourbon, so with the, the four year being in there. Uh, so they're getting there. And then uh, there's no harsh note uh, I say it's or ethanol. so smooth. Yep. That is so smooth. Yeah, this one's great. If this is the way things continue with their stuff, that seven year old, six year old mm -hmm. is gonna be off the shelf instantly. Yeah. Grabbing more of those aged flavor notes in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's, Super smooth. Uh, oh, I think a little more mm -hmm. time in the barrel will give it more complexity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's It's got the sweet notes. It's got the vanilla notes, but it doesn't have any of the uh, barrel spice or the spices that come with uh, age in the barrel. So I think yeah. it's, it's getting to that time where it flips over and changes, which will be exciting. Uh, mm -hmm. It definitely has a lot of promise and it shows that give it a little bit more time in the barrel and it's going to be some really, really good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty simple right now, so I might want to put it in a cocktail. Would you yell at me for that? <laughs> no. Uh -uh. I, I <laughs> Sorry, <think> Chuck. <laughs> I think this would be okay in a cocktail. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It's just... I, you know, continuing to drink it neat, mm -hmm. there's really not a whole lot going on. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you basically get the, the vanilla, the caramel, a little bit of brown, burnt brown sugar, and then that's about it. There's not really much of a finish no. at all. It just kind of no. disappears. But it is like really good. So it's one of those where this good ingredient is going to make a really good cocktail. Yeah. Yeah. Something bourbon forward. So it's. You know, mm -hmm. you get that nice smoothness, and that's really all that's there, and just a few other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, very true. Don't hate me. <laughs> mm -hmm. But this is probably what they use in their old fashions, right? That barrel aged old fashioned that we had. I would, I would imagine that's their product, which is really good. Yeah. So that's another thing. If you go to uh, Bardstown Bourbon Company, they have barrel aged old fashions and barrel aged Manhattans. I think it is is the other one. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and they have it to go. So you can get a nice little container and take it with you. Uh, but what they do is with some of their uh, bourbon, they leave it in or they make the cocktail and then they put it back in a barrel and then they let yeah. it, they vat it for a while, let it age and everything like that. And then they pour it into a uh, stainless steel drum to sit. And then as they need it on the bar, they just pour a whole bunch and then there you go. And it is some really good uh, barrel aged old fashioned. Yeah. Like they're very good. Mm -hmm. I have one every time I go. Well, yeah, it's kind of standard. I, it's still just like lingering caramel for me. Yeah. Like I want it to be more with each sip. Yeah. And I keep reevaluating. Is there anything else that I'm tasting? Nope. Just caramel. Yeah, but this is one that would get you in trouble because since there's no burn or anything like that, you could just sit there and just drink this and drink it and drink it. Yeah. And be on the floor very quick. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, it's a it's a good one. I'm again, it keeps getting me really excited for where Bardstown's going with their product. Mm -hmm. I think it's just going to keep getting better and better. Now, was this one that you got while we were there, or did you sneak that in somewhere else? No, I got it when we were there. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know you got a bourbon while we were there, of mm -hmm. course. Yeah. But I. Didn't remember you can't go, if it was you, that one. You can't go to a distillery and not buy a bourbon. That, that's I just, know. you have to support local business. Now, didn't we walk away from one? Because after uh, going to Bardstown Bourbon oh, Company, yeah, yeah. we did hop over to Heaven Hill. Yep. 
Yeah, so we went over to Heaven Hill. Uh, without anything. Yeah, and if you get a chance to go to Heaven Hill, they just uh, doubled their visitor center and yeah. added a museum section so to it, cool. which is yeah, absolutely amazing. It talks about the fire with Heaven Hill, where they lost a whole bunch of uh, warehouses and a whole bunch of product, uh, and just the history of that and how uh, the Shapira brothers, there's five of them, mm -hmm. after the fires, they did not lay a single person off. It didn't matter if you had to uh, mop floors or what, they were going to make sure that you still had a job. And so this expansion shows all that stuff, talks about the how they got the larceny line, how they got the old Fitz line, everything like that. So it's really cool. And then there's uh, they added a bar up above uh, called the Five Brothers Bar and Lounge, I think it is, Something. Uh, that they in the future will open up to a uh, restaurant. So then you'll be able to get food there. So now you'll have like three places to get food in Bardstown, which is Bardstown Bourbon Company, Heaven Hill, and then mm -hmm. Mammy's, I think is the name of the, the restaurant that is famous because all the distillers go there and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and so the really cool thing uh, that they're going to start doing which I don't want to tell you about because then other people coming in will do it and then I won't be able to, but I'm nice. So I will, uh, is a pour your own bottle experience. So they are going to, for $40, you get to, uh, go and do this. Uh, and what it is is they will have barrel proof, Elijah Craig, mm -hmm. barrel proof, larceny, barrel proof, uh, Bernheim okay. wheat, and mm -hmm. then a barrel proof surprise, uh, for the 40 bucks, you get to try all four. And then if you want to pay whatever the cost of the bottle is on top of it, then you can pour your own bourbon straight from the tank, uh, uh, cap it, everything like that, sign it, all the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's the only place I know that, that you'll ever be able to get Bernheim wheat that is barrel strength. Yeah. Uh, the Elijah Craig barrel strength, people are going to start doing store picks and things like that. So that's going to be a little more common, but uh, that I'm guessing will be, uh, pick from their master distillers. So probably some of their best stuff. And then, uh, I mean, larceny barrel proof. I'm just meh on if, if it's your thing, it's there. And then whatever that fourth one is, that is a heaven Hill only exclusive that you can get there, which would be really cool to have. So mm -hmm. I would recommend, uh, if you like, it's not live yet. They're talking about it being right. live, maybe beginning to mid July. Uh, and they're already expecting it to book out three, four months in advance. And I mean, good luck. Yeah, good luck getting <laughs> it. But if you do get it, I would recommend, you know, going with like a group of four, like you and three people that don't like bourbon. That way you can get all four <laughs> bottles uh, or, you know, taking your wife and she can pick a bottle and then you can pick a bottle. That way you oh. get two of the four. Yeah. So because they're all going to be great bottles, I'm sure. I'm sure they will. So, yeah. All right. What's next? All right. So the next thing we're going to taste <clears throat> tonight is uh, one of the advantages to living in Kentucky besides uh, what people think, which is we have bourbon everywhere, which we really don't because everybody knows about bourbon. And so it stays on the shelf. Keeps getting shipped out everywhere. Yeah. And then when something like Henry McKenna hits, it's gone in five minutes. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, but the cool thing is some of these distilleries have started, uh, uh, I guess, box memberships type thing. So yeah. uh, make All the subscription subscription things yeah. yeah yeah so makers mark has a subscription <laughs> it's your bark service box. yeah exactly <laughs> uh it has the best subscription service ever which is the whiskey drop so i pay them and then they ship uh limited edition bourbon to my house which i mean is great so uh coming up here in september uh they're gonna do fae01 and fae02 to my house so that's gonna be amazing uh but this one what they did is if you're not aware of Maker's Mark, they use staves and they use 10 different staves in their uh, flavor profile to get you different flavors and everything like that. So that's why if you do your own uh, pick at Maker's Mark, there's like a thousand and one combinations you can do of different flavors, Jeez. which is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the uh, flavor profiles or staves is the Mocha Stave. The Mocha Stave is mm. now retired. It is gone. Uh, and this is it? Yeah, so this is it. So this is one of the last ones. And what they decided to do is we got uh, this guy here, which is melted mocha is what they called it. And it has two seared French cuvee, two Maker's Mark 46, and six roasted French mocha staves. Okay. And then what they wanted to do is show their new stave, which is replacing 
the uh, mocha, which is roasted French medinant. I have no idea how to say that word. Let me see. And so what they did is they took... Mendiant? I don't know. Mendiant. We'll is go with French? that. French? Yeah. Mendiant? If somebody knows exactly how to say it, good luck. <laughs> Let us know in the chat, but I have no idea. And so what they decided to do is showcase how those six staves being swapped out affect the taste of the bourbon. Right. So again, it's just giving validity to their uh, idea of... Um, how aging with the staves works mm -hmm. and how it does affect the bourbon, which I've had some really good makers marks. Uh, FAE 01 is one of my favorites and uh, a distiller select that we got part of makers mark uh, um, whiskey drop was really, really good. So slide this one up. Here. Yeah. Keep track of which one we're having. Yes. We'll start with the guys getting retired, the melted mocha. Melted mocha. Yeah. So these are the mocha staves. Okay. The melted mocha. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds delicious. I don't know how much mocha flavor might we will actually see. be in there, but yeah, I've been like pleasantly impressed with these Maker's Mark products that you've been getting. Oh, uh, what's prescription say? Curious to know. Okay, uh, so prescription, we were talking about that a little bit earlier. Uh, that is from Bardstown Bourbon Company. So we went down there for our anniversary. And every old fashioned, so they do their barrel aged old fashions that are just absolutely amazing. If you haven't had one, go. Uh, and they stamp all their ice cubes with their B, which is pretty cool. It was neat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Melted mocha. I get like. There is a hint of mocha yeah. going on. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty nice. Hmm. Why'd they have to retire the mocha state? I don't know. This other one better be like amazing, way better. Because that's what the new. Thing yeah, that's doing? the new one. This is the old okay. one that got retired. So are these? These aren't related to FAE one. That's something different. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, you're good. We're just happy you're here, and we gotta, we gotta hit up and uh, email each other and figure out a time to meet up and do a live stream with you too. It'd be fun. There is like a bitter chocolate note here. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Again, it's very smooth, similar to the Bardstown. Yes. Well, so because the Makers is a weeded bourbon, so that's why you're going to get mm -hmm. more of the sweet, smooth notes because okay. it's not going to have that rye, high uh, rye finish on it. Okay. So, that yeah. makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. What do you think? I like, like it. it. I think it's great. I think mm -hmm. this is one of those bottles that should just stay on the shelf and not go to friends. Mm. Yeah. I'm getting even more mocha coming from this. Mm -hmm. All right. Melted mocha. There you go. So can people get this or can it only come in your bark box? It can only come in the bark <laughs> box. Uh, you might be able to find a couple um, mocha profiles still out there and about because people did uh, single barrels and Maker's Mark, a, a single barrel bottle is about 80 bucks, so they don't go as quick. And for some reason, and we've talked about this on the channel with the guys before, yeah. uh, people don't buy Maker's. They're like scared of it for some yeah, reason. I can see that. And so, yeah, so this stuff sits pretty well and you could probably find a Mocha barrel selection mm -hmm. if you look around. Um, mm -hmm. But they're definitely pushing mm -hmm. the new one. So uh, Westport Whiskey and Wine, which is a local place is for us in Louisville that mm -hmm. uh, does a lot of picks and really good picks, has, I think, two of the new ones out. And they've been saying, like, mm -hmm. this is the first barrel you can get in Louisville and things yeah. like that. Hmm. I'm so impressed with it. So I don't know if you mentioned this. Can it ship outside of Kentucky, though? Kentucky and D.C., I think, is it. Really? Yes. And they only open it. It's like, uh, so Four Roses. It does, it's not a, a box subscription, but uh, at the first day, I think it is at like noon ish of every quarter, they uh, Four Roses opens the Mellow Moments Club for like 30 seconds. Right. And if you get in, you get part of it. Uh, and so, yes, yeah, uh, <laughs> Maker's Mark is similar with the Whiskey Drop, where mm -hmm. it's open for only a select period of time. And if you get in, you get in. Otherwise, uh, you just get put on the wait list. And I think they email you like, it's open. Good luck. Hopefully you can get in. Mm. So hmm. 
Um, so this is, I'm just thinking, you know, cocktail or neat. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'd put this in a cocktail. I think I would drink it neat, but how would you feel if I blended it with the winter whiskey from New Riff? Ooh, that, that could be interesting. Because it has some similar things. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't remember if that one was more chocolatey. Maybe it was. And there's uh, some of the chocolate here. I don't know. It might be might an interesting been a bit. Uh, blend together. Yeah. So now, I don't know if he's watching, but I do know he watches the videos. And so we can oh, yeah. call him out. Who? Mark said this was oh. too high proof for him. This? What yeah. is it? 108? Yeah. So does That's... it just burn too much? No. Or? Okay. Anytime uh, my wife can call out one of our friends. For... Um, I would have said this is a lower proof. If you had me guess, like if I didn't know, I would probably say like 98. Mm -hmm. Not 108. From London. Hmm. Oh, hey, James. How's it going? I like from London. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, ask a question on Kentucky Craft Bourbon called MB Rowan. So I've had MB Rowan before. Uh, What's it say? Uh, if a 78% white corn, 17% rye, and 5% has a funk note. So MB Roland does a couple of really cool stuff. Uh, I have not had their regular one, uh, but they have one that is, uh, oh shoot, it's uh, something fire, uh, dark fire. I don't know. Uh, it was at Westport just did, uh, which is, means nothing to you, but our, our, our local <laughs> liquor store that does a lot of store picks and that's where I go. And they have a, a tasting bar, uh, did one dark fire. That's what it was, I think. Mm. Uh, and so what they did is the corn is, uh, half of the corn is, uh, burnt or smoked beforehand. Oh. And then they put it in the mash. And yeah. so it's really cool because you get all the smoke notes that you yeah. get on like a Lagavulin or something like that, but none of the peat notes. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people uh, here in Kentucky, because we're not as sophisticated as <laughs> you people across the pond that uh, drink scotch all the time. Yeah. Uh, and like the peat note, I know a lot of my friends, Chuck is one of them that really hates the peat note, uh, but it has uh, some smoke that's really, really good. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the one you're talking about, but I do know just the regular white corn will give it a little bit of a different flavor profile than just the regular yellow corn does. But MB Roland is doing some pretty cool stuff. And if you can pick up a bottle, uh, it's it's really good. They also, mm. funny enough, uh, they have a, or did, I don't know if you can find it still, a hemp infused one. So they did it, uh, they put hemp oh, seeds so in the mash and infused it with hemp, which is crazy. Mm. So they're always trying to do new and cool stuff over there. And the the other thing with them is they do it, uh, they get the grain. I think they they might do the grain themselves or it's it's very, very local. So they're, it's everything is right there with them over in uh, Western Kentucky. So they're, mm. they're one of the distilleries far west away from all of us. But yeah, they've got a lot of good reviews and some pretty cool stuff. Neat. Yeah. Do you have one? I do not. I almost bought that dark okay. fire one, but I don't want to be in the doghouse for spending too much money on bourbon. Is that one expensive? No, it's the 60, but I've spent a lot of money in bourbon. Yeah, he does month. have a budget. So, and yeah. by the way, mm -hmm. <laughs> I bought him bourbon the other day, which normally doesn't happen. Did. But went to the winery. Are we going to share? I, I mean, yeah, people can. probably know about Starlight Distillery in Indiana at this point because uh, it's gotten a couple of awards now, right? This, yeah, it's the uh, Ascot. Yeah, and the, the Ascot. Yep. Uh, it was talked about on someone else's channel the other day. Yep. So word is out now. Anyway, Starlight is 40 minutes away from us, um, but I go more for the winery and I'm part of the wine club. Uh, but when you get a discount on a case, you can do wine and bourbon. <laughs> you do wine and spirits. Um, so I made a case with a mix. Um, almost 50-50, not quite. I got him three bottles. Yep. So, But yeah. they have they have brandy up there, too. So I got the Applejack brandy. Yes. So that was kind of the um, kind of new thing. Because the other one was the rye and the bourbon. Yes. So, bourbon. yeah, she got me a single barrel <laughs> bourbon, which was five years bonded and bond, 
bonded and bond. Yeah. Uh, which, well, was, no, there was a single barrel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But it, it's also bonded. Oh. Uh, and then a single barrel orphan barrel rye. rye that is really good. Uh, so they're right out of Southern Indiana right. and they're doing some pretty cool stuff. Actually, uh, eventually when we get to towards the end of the year towards uh best bourbon of the year as it sits right now i have a special bottle from starlight that was <laughs> finished in uh cuban cigar. or uh, brazilian cigar barrels cigar barrels. which i didn't know cigars were in barrels like yeah i drink bourbon but i don't smoke so i don't know much about cigars and yeah. it is by far the best bourbon I've had so far this year. Probably top three all time. Nobody wants it. No, don't try to get it. It's terrible. He let me try it. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. The, it's, it's the, so special. It, yeah, it's the first. It's really special. It's the first bottle of bourbon my wife was like. I you immediately don't, said, yeah. put it on the top shelf. Yeah, you don't share with family. <laughs> I did. Uh, yeah, it was very good. That was surprising. There were, there's a couple more comments. Yeah. So I don't know if they actually grow their own hemp or not. Um, if everything they say, which is everything is like basically, you know, farm to grain, then I would imagine they grew a little bit of hemp. I know it's legal uh, in Kentucky to grow hemp. Uh, you just have to be careful with it. U uh, of L and UK actually grow hemp farms. Uh, yeah. Because we teach, we do... Uh, uh, stuff with uh, those universities every now and then, and we get put on tours all the time. And they were actually saying at U of L, they have to uh, the security have security for their hemp farms because big well, surprise people go after it, uh, even though it's hemp. So yeah, so they're doing some cool research and everything like that. Yeah, it's used to make clothes and rope and everything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, I would say it's a uh, I'd say it's a big Kentucky thing. Yeah, Kentucky. From what I understand. Yeah, it's, it's becoming one of the biggest crops in Kentucky as tobacco falls because right. it's becoming less be. and less popular right. and vaping is more and more popular and things <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah. Hemp is going to, is going to take over. That's why a lot of people are pushing for uh, marijuana to be legalized in Kentucky is because we have a good climate and everything to build, uh, to grow it. Right. So. Mm -hmm. So this is the rich mendiant. Yeah. Maybe if I'm saying that right. Nose is nowhere near as good. No, it's. I cannot smell a whole lot. It's it's more of the barrel spice. It's mm. maybe a little bit of almonds or nutmeg on there. Yeah, is what I would go with. I can see almond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Picked up a bottle of bourbon finished in the out. Oh wait, apple brandy cask. Starlight did it finished in apple brandy cask prescription. Because if they did and I missed this, I'm going to cry because anything, any bourbon finished in there. apple brandy casks sure, is amazing. I'm sure it was gone within oh, an I'm hour. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it makes me think of almond extract. Yeah. Like when she said that, I was like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, honestly, like female perspective, um, like lotions have <laughs> some almond in them sometimes. Oh man, when, that's what it makes you think of. When was that? Was that a while ago that they released that, and we just missed out because, again, Starlight is well, gonna. Like you were you were just there to pick up the cigar yeah. one, and then I was just there, and all, and I got like all the good stuff. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, uh, since I know prescriptions local and everything like that, they're releasing three new uh, barrels to uh, Saturday. Uh, so if you're not part of their Facebook page, join that. And yeah, they got some pretty did cool. Did you tell ones. me? No, I did not. What is it? Well, we're we're going to your in-laws, so we don't have time to stop over there. Okay. We're, I just we're bought you three bottles. Yeah, so we're going to my in-laws, your parents' house. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. We could probably yeah hold off. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't. This is. Uh... I don't like it as much. I like the melted mocha. Oh, yeah, the melted mocha. Yeah. Was really good. I mean, this. I don't is, know what to think about this. This has got a lot more. So the melted mocha is what I like, which is all chocolate, caramel, vanilla. Like it's a dessert, like in a bottle, and it's delicious. This is much more of your rye notes, uh, your uh, spice notes. Like I think there's some nutmeg in there. Yeah, I'm maybe definitely thinking bit. baking spice. I'm, yeah. it, it, again, like almond extract and even like vanilla extract. Yeah. 
is what I'm, you know, coming to mind. Yeah. It doesn't taste like a bourbon. No, no, it tastes more like a a whiskey, I would say. Like a a, a rye whiskey. It's yeah. not it's not like a true rye. It's weird. It's like it's a bourbon that goes into a a rye. Yeah. So okay, entry proof podcast did a pick. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, hopefully they release one of those to the public and not just a pick. They'll just brag about it on the internet, mm -hmm. make everybody sad they can't be a part of it. Yeah, and probably when we're on vacation. But gosh, dang it. Yeah. We are vacationing in Indiana. Yeah, I'm hoping to find a Russell's 13 while we're there, but we'll see. Hmm. So I do want to just story share time with the maker's mark because <laughs> you had mentioned that like not many people are super interested in maker's mark yeah and i think it's because you think of it as um more of like a mixing mm -hmm. drink you're gonna use it like not even for cocktails i mean like mixing right you know and when we got married because you know thinking about our anniversary again so we got married six years ago if you can believe it six years ago this guy was not into bourbon at all. And so at our wedding, which was in Kentucky, when we made our bar, <laughs> we only included Maker's Mark. That was the only bourbon that was available. Um, so looking back on it, if we could change things about our wedding, we would have a you know, wonderful supply of great bourbon. But it's kind of funny when we reflect back and think we only had Maker's Mark available and just the standard. And it was the giant bottles, right? Yeah. Like from like Costco or yeah. something. Well, and so we got married in a dry county. So we right. had to bring, we had it, to all bring in. it in. And us, well, we're, again, like we've said multiple times, we're teachers. So we're broke. We're poor, poor <laughs> people. Uh, and uh, to save money, I brewed all the nice. beer for the wedding. So I think nice. it came out to be like five or 6,000 bottles. It was a lot. That is the last time I've ever brewed beer. That's true. Because when you he burn himself out. Yeah. <laughs> when you hand wash 5,000 bottles of beer, it is terrible. <laughs> and so I've never done that again. Yeah. Uh, and switch to bourbon. So, but yeah, yeah. uh, I don't, yeah. Can you imagine? How would you stock the bar now? If let's say we got married oh, now. Oh, I already told you what we do. We we would have our wedding at at uh, Hubert's, oh, and yeah. we would get a barrel. And you, the party favor for everyone that came to the wedding <laughs> is they get a <laughs> bottle of bourbon. And a whole if, bottle. Here yep, you go. And if they don't want it, they can give it back to me, and then I can just stock my <laughs> own bar. Like and we gonna have our own labels printed on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Or no, uh, what'd you call it? A tater sticker? Yeah, we'd put a tater sticker on yeah, it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> it would be great. I highly recommend if you're gonna do that for your wedding, please invite me. I will. I'll bring a good <laughs> gift. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, too bad that this one's kind of. I mean, it's so-so. Mm -hmm. I I wouldn't really choose to drink it. I can see why they're they're switching though. Like mm -hmm. the again, our flavor profile, melted mocha, definitely is the one because it's super creamy. Uh, mm -hmm. All those wonderful dessert notes. The rich median or however you say it is Mendiant, yeah I don't know. is very much like a spicy rye-ish bourbon uh it's all this baking stuff yeah has like i'm just gonna i'm gonna pour it into a bourbon cake or something yeah I mean, there you go <laughs> make an icing out of it and put it on a cake mm -hmm. that's what it makes me think of i don't know it it's okay yeah maybe for other people based on what your flavor profile preference is yeah you no, might be I, really into it, but yeah. no. I mean, it's still good. I would definitely take it over some of the other things I've had, uh, but it's it's still smooth. Yes, um, and there's the there's flavors there. Yeah, and, and there's some stuff going on. It's still one of those which I don't understand, which is, and again, I don't get it. Uh, going back to the the wedding thing about how <laughs> Makers was like the the cocktail mixer. I don't understand nationally why if you put Makers and Woodford next to each other, everybody thinks Woodford is the elegant, classy bottle and Makers is People the... People think that? Yes. Like when, oh. you, when you fly or you go anywhere other than Kentucky, 
and you've got like a bourbon bar or and you're like i want your top end pour they're mm -hmm. like oh you want woodford and it's like no makers is better than woodford like yeah make or woodford like, should be the the mixer and everything like that. yeah woodford is the thing that they keep in stock at churchill because right. they pour it all in all the mint juleps there well but that's why that people think thinks woodford is like the high tier because it's the derby and the derby yeah, is fancy don't... elegant people i know yeah so disclaimer the derby may look fancy on the outside but it's really not fancy it's still yep. a horse betting track <laughs> yep and if you go to the infield you're gonna have a great time <laughs> but don't dress super fancy <laughs> no no get your boots mm -hmm. yeah okay What's i mean next? it's so good that's the the final bottle over there i'm still kind of enjoying this one okay you can you can grab it we can talk about it this pursuit bottle mm -hmm. did i tell you i saw i think i did i think i told you i saw another pursuit bottle but you said it was one you already had might be yes they do have amazing <laughs> advertising like that is that is what they go with yeah um and that's why like everybody thinks woodford is just the best thing ever uh so the next pour, maybe the last pour, I don't know, I'll probably talk her into drinking some other things, uh, which is great, is uh, the brand new Pursuit uh, series I got. So uh, the Pursuit, uh, if you guys don't know, so another podcast out there, really the podcast when it comes to bourbon uh, and what got me into bourbon is Bourbon, bourbon Pursuit, Pursuit. Uh, podcast. The Kenny and Ryan, they've for a while now done their own uh, single barrel picks uh that they do through the sourcing market and they do uh they get a taste a whole bunch of stuff and then they bring them out as uh their own label which is the pursuit series uh recently here they've started their own uh blend which is actually really good and i have on the shelf back there called pursuit united which is going to come out here in july and no they don't pay me i wish they did but uh they uh are releasing pursuit united on seal box and if you can pick up a bottle of that this stuff is amazing stuff um but this guy here they just released i was able to get it uh it's episode 41 and it is uh, the first rye they've released in a yeah, long time. Yeah, so it's a straight rye whiskey. Yep. And so it's actually from Finger Lakes, which is up in New York. Oh. And so it is a five-year-old rye from them um, that we'll see how it is. Okay. So, I mean, I trust Kenny and Ryan. Everything they've picked is delicious. Uh, I've been lucky and I got to do a pick with them. Uh, I got to pick a Driftless Glen, rye, and bourbon. That was really oh, yeah. good. You like had all the samples and yeah. then you picked one. Did a stream yard with them and yeah. it was pretty cool. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So rye. Sometimes I lean towards the ryes because I like the spice. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Ooh, the nose is nice. Yeah. I'm getting like apple on the nose. Apple, some uh, definitely like hay Smith grass apple. notes. I don't have as much as that, but it's like earthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That is so good. <laughs> oh Glad you all got to see that reaction. Yeah, live. that's a good one. Um, what is that? That is apple. I so there's so much of mm -hmm. that Granny Smith apple going on. The mouthfeel was really different. Yeah. I mean, it was like this weird viscosity where it was like thicker syrup. Mm -hmm. Which made it really good. It was like having like an apple flavored syrup. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, James. So uh, another story I can tell, which is great. So we started last year actually i got her to agree with it i don't know how i got so lucky but what we do <laughs> now is for our anniversary whatever year anniversary it is i buy a bourbon that is that old so like definitely going mm. to keep her around so eventually i age out a bourbon and i have to go to scotch and we'll be able to get like <laughs> 35 year old 40 year old scotch which will be incredibly expensive yeah. Yeah. but you know you can we get pours and not a nope, bottle nope it's got to be a bottle i was oh my gosh so well, then what do you do after the anniversary you just have a awesome bottle five year old <laughs> well when we hit our like 50th anniversary we have to drink from every previous bottle oh this is a new yeah, thing he fun. just made up 
so, I didn't yeah. know about that one. So last year for our five year anniversary, we did Woodenville. And then this year for the sixth year, I was able to get a bottle of the brand new New Riff uh, malted rye, which mm -hmm. if you can find, pick it up. It's really good. It's going to be part of their uh, everyday lineup. So it's just going to be hard this first go around to get just because they didn't uh, age a whole bunch of the bottles. Um, but it is really, really good. Uh, Fred Minnick did a review on it too. Um, and his, his way of saying it was, if you aren't a whiskey drinker, don't drink it uh, because it's very complex, very, very good. Uh, and you won't appreciate everything that goes with it. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's delicious. It was very good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So it is the date we each have a dram and it's great. Um, and then actually we have uh, up on the shelf up there kind of on our Fresh high shot, our top shelf, we have a bottle of new riff that her parents bought us. Uh, when our daughter was born. So mm -hmm. every day, uh, year for her birthday, we pop that bottle open and pour it. And then of course I, I have, because I, I had to buy into the hype. I have a Blanton's with her birth date on it that I will give her when she turns 21 and hopefully she'll share Enjoy a pour it. with me. Yeah. So I'm sure she will. This, so th um, some other notes that are coming out now, uh, honey, mm. which is also making this delicious. Maybe that's the viscosity. It's like a honey viscosity. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. honey apple. It's so good. Mm -hmm. You all, it's really good. So this is episode 41, which is a rye, which I, I got. Mm -hmm. Episode 44 is a six-year-old bourbon, or no, a seven-year-old bourbon from the same place mm -hmm. that Chuck has. Mm. And we get to see him over New Year or over Fourth of July, so which he's means bringing it right. Oh, I, it's right down there. Oh yeah, because you picked them. Up? Yeah. <laughs> In case you all don't know, back to the Power of Bourbon channel. <laughs> Chuck has a personal shopper. This guy. Wouldn't you like that to be your full time job? Oh yeah. Just bourbon hunting for Chuck. And that would be great. I mean, I do spend. I. Uh, so that's your summer yeah, job yeah. for sure. Oh, it is definitely my <laughs> summer job. So Chuck and I, uh, because we're we're super nerds. Uh, so Chuck, uh, for those of you that haven't watched the channel a bunch, he is a, a VP of a sweet corn breeding uh, mm -hmm. uh, company, company. Yeah. and so he does a lot of spreadsheet and data analysis. And I'm an engineer and an engineering teacher, so I do the same thing. So we have all of our bottles of bourbon in a spreadsheet with their mm -hmm. mash bills, uh, cost. Mm -hmm where we bought it from, everything like that. And so like my number one expense is total wine. I think number two is like liquor barn or something like that. Chuck's number one, I think is Benny's. His number two is me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he keeps track of it that way too. Yes. <laughs> like from TJ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just basically call him up like, hey, so I found this, do you want it? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes he gets mad at him for even asking. He's like insulted. Mm -hmm. Why did you ask? You should have just bought that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's a $200 bottle. Just buy like, it. Like, <laughs> I'm just checking. It's your money. <laughs> no, I'm at work. Don't bother me. Just buy it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, this I'm, is really, really good. I'm getting the hay note on the nose now mm -hmm. that you mentioned. This is, uh, <laughs> that's so good. Yeah. I know y'all get to see me rave about it. It's it is that good. Mm -hmm. There might still be some on Sealbox. Honestly, I don't really want to like touch things so, on the computer. What's the so the proof is one oh three. Yep. Five years. Five yeah, years. This is like one twenty six like of one twenty nine. It's like it's like that perfect yeah. range. Everything definitely a rye because you feel the spiciness. Mm -hmm. Um, as you have a bit more, this is so good. Of course, I would say that this is neat. Yes. Don't put this in a cocktail. Mm -hmm. This is so good. Yeah, this is a delicious. I wouldn't even chill this. Like this is like neat all the way. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So is this one of those that we don't share with family? We just. Um, I'd be willing to share it because it's so it's different and mm -hmm. unique, and I would want to be like, I want you to understand what bourbon can be like you mm -hmm. know like showing like other sides than what people would normally have yeah but so wayne uh i know you just from what you've been saying that you're local uh to louisville if you have not joined new riffs whiskey club do it 
Uh, so they release bottles through that before anything else. That's how I got the uh, new Rift 15 year old bourbon. And I've gotten all their releases, uh, special releases like the Balboa Rye, the Maltsters, everything like that. Uh, but they release that there first and you can get it. And then you just have to drive up to the distillery, which is so terrible. And then uh, pick your bottle up there and then try some <laughs> single barrels really cheap. And usually whatever their limited release that you pick up is, they have on the bar Sample. for like $3 a pour or something like that. And it's amazing. Uh, if you if you haven't been to New Riff yet and you're in the area, go to New Riff uh, because every single barrel they currently have, they have on the bar to taste. And I think it's like maybe two, three bucks a pour. So when we went up there the first time, we went through all three of their bourbons and all three of their ryes. And mm -hmm. then we were able to pick a single barrel bourbon and a single barrel rye. Mm -hmm. And we already knew what it tastes like. And it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. So. I like James's suggestion about um, after 21 years for anniversary. Go to single grain whiskeys. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. Well, we can share more about anniversary celebrations, but I had an idea and I don't know if people would be up for this because I'm willing to do another one, but maybe there's one that people want us to try okay so if there's any suggestions people can let us know yeah i but, don't know if they can see all the crazy bottles i have but well we got a we got a bunch. don't need to if you just make sure that camera angles down so they don't see the top shelf then uh, you're good <laughs> yeah we got a couple up there anyway so in the meantime mm -hmm. then you can think about what you might want to try next Oh, I know what I would go with next. So before we were doing the ages for anniversary, mm -hmm. you know, with the five year, six year, our four year anniversary, we got to have some Peppy 15. Oh, yeah. And ironically enough, on our anniversary that it was, year. It was the best anniversary gift. It for just, me. just so happened that I had just one of those feelings where I thought I might be pregnant. Yep. And so I kept trying to push off. And this guy over here is like, I'm driving you to Walgreens to get a pregnancy test now. And I'm like, no, we can wait. Because we had already established we were going to try the Pappy 15 for the anniversary. But he forced me to take the test. Sure enough, positive. So I found out I was pregnant. So we were celebrating not only the anniversary, but finding out that I was pregnant. And we were going to have our first child. And then he didn't let me have, maybe I had a drop. You were like, you can let it touch your tongue. But that was it. So I didn't yeah. really get to have any Pappy 15. Yeah, I, I had him poured in two For glasses. that anniversary. And I was like, all right. And she comes out and she's like, yeah, pregnant. I was just like, whoop, awesome. <laughs> yeah, he thinks it's hilarious. It was. <laughs> she has had the Pappy 15 since then. Just, I have, just I letting have. you know. Well, you can let people know. Is the Pappy 15 worth the hype? Is it a good celebratory bourbon if you can get your hands on it? If you can get it at MSRP. Uh, so, again, Chuck and I... I liked it. We did yeah. review it for one of our... Yeah. So, Chuck, Chuck and I have lucked out uh, mainly because we just... I, I have summers off and anytime we've got some free time, we always just do like a heaven hill run and some things like that. Uh, so Chuck has an old Fitz 16 and I have an old mm -hmm. Fitz 15. 16 and 15 year decanter. Uh, and we've blinded those against the Pappy 15 and the old Fitz 15, the old Fitz 16. It, it doesn't come close. Like yeah. the Pappy 15. It's good. Uh, if you get it at MSRP, like, yeah, we, at, at the end of the day, like, don't let people hype it up yeah. and make you feel like you need to pay more for it. It is good if you can get it, but don't go crazy. Yeah, Wayne. Uh, so, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, uh, Casey was asking about uh, smoke, smoke wagons. Wagon. So, smoke wagon hasn't really hit the Louisville area very much. Uh, though, so th there's two of them right now. Uh, you got smoke wagon, uh, which is MGP, uh, aged in Nevada. And it's really, really good. Chuck found a bottle in Illinois and let us try it. And it's delicious. Uh, for us here in Louisville, the one we can find is Bella Mead. Uh, and Bella Mead cast strength is basically the same thing, just aged in Tennessee of MGP. Uh, 
and they're both delicious. So depending on your area, if you can get smoke wagon really easy, go with smoke wagon. If you can get uh, um, Bellamide cast strength real easy, get Bellamide cast strength. They taste very, very similar. Uh, I would put them on par with each other. There's not one that's really that much better than the other. Uh, and don't pay secondary to get the one you can't find and enjoy the one you have is what I would go with. So. Mm -hmm. Looks like maybe only 12 states. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. It's just not, so, not that just, big. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, okay. but, Oh, uh, again, I, I, I know this, so I can, I can tell you guys, uh, since you're watching us mm -hmm. again, uh, one of my go-to is seal box because they got a lot of stuff. They're getting ready to release smoke wagon on seal box. So if you're in an area, you can't get it and you want to try it. Sealbox will be releasing some smoke wagon if you sign up for their. Uh, I get their text mm. alerts, which is really really dangerous, and <laughs> I get uh, email in case I miss the text alerts. Uh, but they're getting ready to release some uh, smoke wagon. Occasionally, they do have the one that everybody's going after, which is the smoke wagon uncut, unfiltered. Uh, but that usually sells out within like an hour or something like that. So mm. good luck on that one. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I haven't heard about the smoke wagon. Oh, it's, it's good. It's an MGP. So Indiana, uh, mm. that is, uh, they bought and then they, is the MGP, the one that's like peanut notes. No, that's Jim Beam. MGP oh. is, uh, uh, Remus repeal reserve, George Remus. That's their brand. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think what I have. That is, Oh, what I know. I know an MGP we can do. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, it violates your your code that we said we couldn't do. It's all right. Oh, top shelf. <laughs> well, it is just us. Yes. Yeah. So this is MGP. Okay. Oh yeah, I remember you yeah. mentioning it. And this is one that he said it's competing for his top yeah. five bourbon of the year. Yes. Because he is keeping track yes. to do a top five for. 2021 and it yep. has to be bottles bought in 2021 yes. this is one of them well and and this once one, he had it he said it was in the top yeah well and the good thing about this bottle it was an expensive bottle but the proceeds went to uh the restaurants right the restaurants in the cincinnati area for covid so it's a tax write-off so there was a positive <laughs> for that uh, any other benefits you can find but it's a tax write-off, honey. <laughs> okay. It supports the local restaurants. You love independent yeah. restaurants. Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. Didn't you get to sample it too? Yeah. Isn't this oh, one yeah. that this you were is, just talking yeah, about? Yeah, like where, five like, bucks on the bar. He like... went to pick it up. Yes. But then sampled it, even though it was one he had already purchased. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Wayne got four bottles of Uncut Unfiltered in Arkansas. So lucky guy there. <laughs> That is the best thing about like, once you get into bourbon, uh, traveling. So again, the great thing about, uh, doing this channel, uh, with Chuck and Brian, mm -hmm. Brian's in Missouri, Chuck's in right. Illinois. So what I can get, they can't usually get what they can get. Brian can't afford. So then we buy from him anyway. <laughs> and then Chuck just can get everything. And, yeah. and on top of that, for his job, he travels all over, usually internationally, but because of COVID, he hasn't done that. So we're waiting for that moment because he's going to, you know, start going to Europe and blanting straight from the barrel, mm -hmm. Japan stuff. It'll be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the MGP is like, how do I describe that? It's like creamy. It tastes more like rye or am I just making that up? No, it's a high rye. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's 35% rye, 5% malted barley, and 60%. So, corn. having it now, is it still in your top five? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's good. The problem was you bought it early on in 2021, and then you've got other really good bourbons since then. Yeah. So, now I have to come back to it compared to the, some of these other ones you've gotten. Well, so. The, we. So the thing is, we ended on a really good one. Well, so and that's so a, but but that's a rye, so that doesn't get to be in our top for the bourbon category. Mm -hmm. I'm not okay. Brian. Brian puts yeah he rye willy and nilly yeah. yeah whatever yeah. So this one, but so new ref though is still new. So to get a 15 year, you were telling me they yeah so had to do something yeah. So what a lot of distilleries do when they first start 
is they buy dissolute from somebody else. So mm -hmm. uh, High West is another perfect example and everything like that. So the difference is, so what you got two ways of doing it, the way High West is doing it and the way New Rift did it. So what New Rift did is they bought a whole bunch of barrels from MGP and then they started releasing it and they released it under the OKI brand. Okay. So it was yeah. uh, aged in Kentucky, uh, distilled in Indiana and loved in Ohio, I think is what it mm -hmm. was, or thought in Ohio or something like that. So that was their their model. And they mm -hmm. released a whole bunch of those to fund their productions while they waited for their whiskey to age. Okay. Then what they did is they sold the OKI brand. So uh, OKI is going to be coming back, but it's not any way associated with New Rift anymore. It's uh, another group out of Cincinnati bought it, I do believe they're out mm. of Cincinnati um, because OKI is really sought after bourbon, but it's just MGP that's been aged for this bottle. What they did is they, they still have, and they say they have more of their MGP stuff just sitting there and they want to do special stuff with it. Uh, the high West way to do it is what high West is doing is the same thing, mm -hmm. but they're slowly blending in their own dissolute and their own bourbon mm -hmm. and rye mm -hmm. into the MGP mm -hmm. to slowly change the flavor profile over time. So the worst thing you can do is say, which I forget, there's one or two uh, companies that did that, which was terrible, which is they put MGP juice in their label and then overnight they switch. I think Smooth Ambler is the one who did it and people just lost it uh they switched to their own dissolute just went whoop. so you had like eight nine year mgp and you just switched in three year four year of your stuff and it mm. completely changed the flavor profile right and so people are used to this amazing product and then they got probably still a good product but so much younger the notes all changed and what they were used mm -hmm. to they didn't get so again so what new riff did which i think is the best is you just say this isn't our stuff uh, we're going to use this to finance us until we can make our own stuff and then change the label, which they changed to new riff and they did their own stuff, mm. which is cool. High West is doing the second best way, I think, which is to phasing phase it in. And so they slowly change your palate to getting used to it. Mm. Okay. And so you get used to what their stuff is. Uh, and then you've got the worst way, which is to claim it's your stuff and then just switch over to your stuff. And then, and then everybody's people are like, like Wait, what? what? I liked this brand. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Yeah. I could see that. Mm -hmm. So it's all about the, because you have to age it. So if you're just getting started, you yes. need to have kind of something to tide you over, so to speak. Yeah. Because otherwise, like uh, from everything I've tasted, four years is like the minimum. Right. For bourbon. Right. Uh, rye. Like, well, like four years is the minimum to get an okay bourbon. Um Bottled and bond is kind of the exception. Really, I'm not. I, it's hard for me to go for a bourbon that's under four years. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as it says bottled and bond, which means it has to be four years old, I'm willing to take a chance on it, even if it's a little more expensive, because I haven't really found some terrible bottled and bonds. Right. There's, there's a couple that are uh, not completely in my flavor profile, but they're good. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, rise like this rye that we just had yeah. at the four and five year mark rise right. can hit a premium so that's where peerless did really good so peerless mm, released rise. their rise and they won all those awards for their rise yeah unfortunately the problem with peerless is it's really expensive so. yeah yeah we've talked about that before yeah it's like we really like it and we really like what they're doing mm -hmm. with their it's the like definition of craft yes. distilling they are all about keeping it small scale and like having those different barrels each time with all those and they and like each time it comes out they have like a different name that they associate with it for those different barrels um it just it stinks I'm like i hate that you're over a hundred dollars so if anyone you know if peerless is watching can't you do anything to bring that down a little bit we love you and love your products, but make it a little more reasonable. Because I was like, 
talking people up at work mm -hmm. when they were asking like what's your favorite and i'm like i love peerless i yeah. love the tour that they do i love what they're doing well yeah and i was like just know like you get it it's a little more expensive so yeah so and, well that's that's a good one though so if you come to louisville to do the bourbon trail and all the bourbon experience which again is amazing the two best tours uh and prescription and wayne uh because they're locals they can they can agree or disagree mm -hmm. uh I think the two best tours you can do is in the Louisville area is definitely Peerless and uh, Old Forester. Uh, Old Foe is the best because it they like make a barrel, they fire the barrel right there in the yeah, distillery, which is really they've cool. They've purposefully done this like mini version in the downtown Louisville location so you can see the whole process in this mm -hmm. in their small location here um and then you get an idea of what's going on yeah. on the large scale end but they do take you from beginning to end everything mm -hmm. that's happening and and i will be the first to admit it is very much like a tourist trap type of thing like it is but whatever are, yeah but but it's <laughs> one of the do it well and it's yeah. like it makes me proud to live in kentucky whatever yeah but it's one of the few places that you can actually like see everything like right. so like yeah. if you go to buffalo trays which isn't the hard hat tour is amazing yeah uh, but, but their things, tours like don't end up doing everything right uh which is the great thing about old foe is it, it hits everything and then of course you get a tasting at the end yeah. the other great one is uh the fusion series four or do you mean discovery four casey because I'm, I will gladly open that discovery floor. <laughs> uh, and then the other one is Peerless. Peerless is really cool because it does the same thing. But uh, you get kind of the like uh, old town, uh, uh, good old boy, like family version with Peerless because it's a family run thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and their master distiller, oh, Caleb, yeah. is mm -hmm. a UK chemical engineer, like right out of college. Uh, I think he's in his 30s Discovery. or something like that. Discovery uh, and Prisoner. Which okay. is uh, really cool. Like, he designed the whole thing. But uh, the cool thing about Peerless that I didn't realize is they work with Kelvin Cooperage, which is one of the barrel people. They pay five bucks as a deposit, or maybe it's 50, something like that, mm. on the barrels. But they don't ever actually buy the barrels. So Kelvin Cooperage has realized that there's more money to be made in used bourbon barrels than new bourbon barrels. So they just basically put it on loan to Peerless, they use it, and then they get it back from Peerless and then they, they can, can sell it, it for, whatever else. for something else and make money off that. Which is like huge right now, like bourbon barrel for anything, beer, wine, I don't know, whatever, storage, furniture. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going yeah. to assume Casey meant the... <laughs> Discovery. Yeah, I, I would assume that's, yeah. Let me make sure. There's a little lingering mm. here. We should just bring down more glasses. Have you told people that this Glen Karen has the logo on it? Yeah. And they know how they can get a Glen Karen with the E equals MC squared logo on it? Yes. Our people know that we have a Patreon and they can join it. This is a chance stuff. to make a plug for it. Yeah, I know. I'm just enjoying it. He's not very bread. good at self-promotion. No. Nope. You just sneak it in. It's like a commercial. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's got a great nose. I really need to pick up another so bottle. Surely I've had this one before, right? Um, I don't know. Probably not. I don't know. You don't share everything with he is kind of sneaky sometimes. He pretends like, oh, everyone I've bought, I'll let you try. Mm -hmm. Like on the side, he's sipping some, holding it back, hiding it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's really, really good. So the the cool thing about Discovery Four is it's all Kentucky uh bourbons uh that has been blended together. So Bardstown, they've got two lines. Well, kind of three lines they got mm -hmm. two main lines which is their fusion and their discovery so the fusion is their stuff with one uh older bourbon blended in so that's what we tried in the beginning the discovery is none of their products all blended together uh so this is for i just bought chuck five and he's excited because it brings tennessee mm -hmm. back in and we all know chuck loves the dickle uh <laughs> and so yeah it's got that i think it's a 17 year old dickle on it which is crazy uh 
but this one just has Kentucky stuff and it's, it's really, really good. I'm excited during July 4th when we see him, we'll pop open that one. Maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll take all the camera work up to the lake and everything yeah, like that. And get you can some fresh it. scenery out there yeah. with the lake in the background. But if you have, if, if you, so the discoveries were kind of always out of my price range. Uh, I, it, it takes a lot for me to spend over a hundred dollars on a bottle of bourbon, mm -hmm. uh, because I don't want to blow my bourbon budget on one bottle. Um, and the discovery four was the first one I had to buy. It's really that good. Um, and they just released some more at the distillery. And I was really tempted to drive down there and buy a backup bottle because this is mm. some of the best stuff from Bardstown. It is good. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's more um, muted, if that makes sense. Like nothing's mm -hmm. really super strong. So yeah, for some people, it probably makes it very drinkable. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is probably a bourbon that like, if someone's not a bourbon lover, if you gave this to them, they would probably still really like it. Yeah, and if you if you just like Kentucky bourbons, like this is tried and true Kentucky bourbon. It's burnt brown sugar. It's got a little bit of the rye pepper notes on the finish. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the sweetness in there again, like nothing, nothing overpowering. Mm -hmm. It's all just kind of melding in there. You said this is not a blend. No, it is. Okay, I was gonna say mm -hmm. it tastes like a blend, but mm -hmm. I thought you said that it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, Wayne. Uh, yeah, they've a got puddle. Oh, uh, what is it? The blue. Oh, the blue. Label. Yeah. So that is uh, fusion one, two, three, and four off to the left there, Casey. Uh, so we, we tried fusion five at the beginning and fusion five is the best of them. Uh, so the fusion series, the cool thing about it is it kind of goes from uh, a really young green apple grain forward note and it's slowly transformed into a much smoother caramel vanilla forward uh flavor mm -hmm. uh and, and another because we talked about tours if you can do the thieving tour at bardstown it is really cool so they pull three barrels and you get a thieve straight from the barrel uh and try their dissolute which they do uh shoot they do contract distilling for like basically everyone so they do it for bourbon pursuit with their pursuit united they do it for chicken mm -hmm. cock they do it for uh kentucky owl i think i mean uh they do some for high west uh they they do all types of stuff at bardstown they actually just uh used a spectrometer and analyzed a bourbon from i think 1950 got the notes on it and were able to replicate it pretty well like it's not exactly perfect and they're gonna start uh this bourbon company back up using what bardstown was able to find and everything like that uh so uh yeah they're doing some pretty cool but the, the thieving barrel is really cool and now at the end of the thieving barrel tour uh you go to their super private uh, tasting room and right before mm -hmm. that is where they do the pour your own bottle and so they ask you uh whatever mm -hmm. they have so right now i think it's french oak finished uh, bourbon is what they have for you to pour your own bottle. Uh, when I was there, it was delicious. the Pfeiffer Pavit XO. So it was uh, normally all their finished products. They age for about 18 months in uh, the barrel. And this one, they age for 45 months mm -hmm. in the secondary barrel. And Pfeiffer Pavit, is is that a, a used wine barrel? Yes. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. I looked that up. I yes. Like, oh, that's why I liked that. Mm -hmm. uh so what is it james asked have you ever tried a scotch with its malt only flavor and found it too much for a sugar friendly palate so i am working on getting into scotch yeah but we only tried like three uh two we've tried we've two only tried two uh so coming up here for the channel what uh because how we how we do it uh with uh bourbon pursuit or with uh uh, power of bourbon is we send each other samples. And so uh, I want to coming up here, send uh, Chuck and Brian uh, five samples of scotch. So one from each of the regions. So obviously the Islay is my log of moon 16 and it'll be great <laughs> to watch Chuck just cry because he can't handle it because he's not a man. Uh, and then uh, for the space side, I've got a long morn 16. So I've got to get the other three regions coming up here. Uh, the long morn I love, I think it's absolutely great. Uh, my, my mom actually what uh, drinks a, uh, uh, McAllen 15, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And it was very sweet and good. Uh, 
so yeah so i'm excited to kind of slowly get my foot into scotch a little bit uh i'm not gonna lie like it's taken me like two years to really learn everything about bourbon so i'm scared to death <laughs> of picking scotch. scotch up because it's even more complex and more to learn uh but yeah so it's it's well, one that we're what we've gotten so far has been fun yeah and interesting mm. so. mm -hmm. well mine's empty uh -huh. I think, it's, I think it's your turn to pick the final one. My bottle. turn to pick? Oh, do y'all want to know what my favorite is? Let's see. Here. I have a couple of favorites. Mm -hmm. Well, probably everybody knows top favorite is that Booker's because that's yep. one of the, I mean, this is entering my top favorite now, this P Pursuit series. Yeah. <laughs> I would pick that. Um, You know, I think it would be fun because we haven't done um, Castle and Key, and that's another really Kentucky. Yeah. Do you have enough information to share about Castle and Key? Well, we could do that, or we could do that single barrel Starlight bourbon that you picked me up that you haven't tried yet. Well, you, full disclosure, tasted it last night by yourself. Didn't even wait for me after I bought it for him. Um, so She had a friend over and they were drinking wine, so. Is it? I know. And at the end of the day, I am going to choose a wine over a bourbon. Sorry. Mm-hmm. But I enjoyed you drinking bourbon with you. Yeah. Um, well, you know how much I like the Castle and Key uh, restorations. Yeah. So I will, you tasted the other one. Oh. I want to end on a good note. So I need something really good. It's not my pick. I need that finale fireworks, you know. Well, it's not my pick. It's it's on you. <sighs> I'm not going to do that. I'm the well, husband. How do I, know? I will do bad. Well, this is what we're going to have to do then. We're going to have to have the Starly one. Uh -huh. And if it's good, we'll end on that. And if it's not good, then I'll just end on the restoration. And if that's not as good as you remember, we'll just pull out the scar barrel. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. It is right over there with the wax on top. Yep. This one? Yep. You should tell them. Uh, can you give a how-to how to open these bottles? Oh, gosh. If it's got wax, run it through uh, hot water for a while because it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> Use your teeth, I think he said. Yep. Good luck. Ooh, FAE01. That would have been a good one prescription. Yeah. So this is a single barrel from Starlight. It is the Distiller's Club pick. So... They, uh, Starlight does have a whiskey club. Unfortunately, I'm on the wait list. I'm not part of it yet, but it's 111.8 proof, aged five years. They had a couple extra bottles of it sitting around, and I was lucky, and she picked one up. You know, I to saw get it. A discount on her wine. I did and, get yeah. that for him. So, definitely. He's taught me enough. I think that was always his secret motive is like yes i'll give her enough information that when she goes out and about she can pick things up well now anytime she goes to kroger it's she's looking, looking for a box store and looking for bookers looking for a box <laughs> and there was nothing there on tuesday and i was told tuesday is the day so i was just disappointed <laughs> okay we keep hoping like again we're going on vacation here for the next two weeks and i know it'll probably be around it'll probably like i figure russell's 13 and but, bookers will drop you know honestly we're around here the bookers doesn't move that fast compared to other things mm -hmm. if you're being honest with yourself like we usually yeah see the bookers around for a while and what they tend to do is only put out a couple yes and then they just replenish so it always looks like it's going fast because there's only like two on the shelves yes but then they come out and they put more because mm -hmm. there've been a couple of times we go back into Kroger and we're like, we swear like we've, it's just too. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I think we'll be okay. Yeah. And this is the year we're getting every bookers. And we're going to blind it off and decide. I'm which excited. Is the best. I'm excited. There's something about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Like it just hits that whatever flavor profile mm -hmm. for me. I like it. Yeah. It's your favorite. Mm -hmm. what's up there are you gonna make me make a list just like you all 
We'll do a cocktail or neat. Yeah, best, maybe. Best neat options of 2021. Well, number one will be your Starlight Cigar Blend. Number two will be one of the best bookers. You're giving it away. <laughs> now people are going to watch the video. <laughs> that is really good. That's yeah. different. So it's very grain forward, which is nice. It's reminding me of pin hook. And when we had the pin hook, it was more like the banana. Yes. So I'm getting some banana on this, like banana and grain. So odiness. I don't know if you're getting that. Yeah. Uh, Walnut. So prescription asks if I'm thinking four bookers this year. I'm hoping so. Uh, though this... New Booker's is hitting really late. Uh, and the, I mean, even the first one hit kind of late. So I'm, they, they claim that, I mean, they, they, they filed with the TTP uh, for uh, batches, but they did last year too. So I'm hoping we get four, but it's what they always do, which is if it's not ready, they're not going to, they're not going to put it out there. So mm -hmm. I mean, I'm hoping. <sighs> so if there was ever a year to give me four uh, bottles of Booker's, we survived COVID. We deserve four Booker's. I want four. Yeah. Well, how many have come out so far? Just the one this Just year? the one, yeah. So they'd have to make up a lot of ground to get the other two out. Mike says our bottle went out today. Sweet. I will so be going to, go to Kroger, Kroger tomorrow. <laughs> and be like, know, Give already, me my boogers. They already closed. Shoot. Actually, 9.45? Yeah. <laughs> See you all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they're technically out. We'll just camp out and be like, give us the boogers. <laughs> so. yeah. This is really good. Yeah, it is. Um, yay me. I win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad the wife did something right when it came to bourbon. Oh, yeah. This is great. Like. Delicious. This is really good. Mm -hmm. That's wow. Yeah. I mean, cocktail or neat choice. This would be neat. Mm -hmm. I like this a lot. Yeah. I, I really like the, it's very grain forward. So you're getting a lot of those, the grain for grain notes, uh, which if you like uh, Pen Penelope bourbon, I think is what it is. Uh, mm -hmm. They do a lot of grain forward stuff. A lot of the stuff coming out of castle and key mm -hmm. uh, through pin hook uh, is mm -hmm. very grain forward. Uh, so if you don't like like the, uh, the the corn notes and things like that, this isn't for you. Um, but I do. Oh, I, like I, I think it's very delicious. So that's really good. Yeah. Hmm. And this was a single barrel. Yes. Okay. And all right. We would not be able to get something like this again. <laughs> Whoa! Well, because not... we got really lucky because yeah. it was uh, left over from. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, good. so not this bottle, but they do do a lot of single barrel picks at Starlight. Uh, the Huberts all kind of have like a competition. Mm -hmm. So the two brothers each pick their own and then the dad picks his own. And then oh. so they got three different ones. And then okay. they try to see like... I guess I haven't been following that side of it enough. Yeah. Just been doing too much of the wine. Mm -hmm. I did almost get you like because I was texting him while I was there. I almost just got the bottle in Bond. And it's the blue label. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very standard. And mm -hmm. I was like, I know that, like, he likes just a good bottle and bond. Mm -hmm. um, would that have been a good choice, too? Yeah. I mean, if you're ever... So if there's ever a distillery you want to take a chance on, my biggest recommendation is grab uh, a bottled and bond uh, of from their distillery. Because you know it's got to be four years. It's all going to be in the same period as far as... Uh, grain harvest. So it's either going to be from uh, January to June or June to December, or I guess July to December and everything like that. Uh, and so like, honestly, I just go for bottled and bonds if it's a new distillery. Uh, Mike, what we are drinking is she picked up from Starlight uh, a uh, single barrel from those guys. So it is actually technically from their whiskey club, but uh, they had a couple left over. So they just put it out kind of like as orphan barrels is what they call it. And so she was able to pick up a bottle of this when she was picking up her wine with her friend. Yeah. I wasn't invited. It's okay. Because no, I got some it bourbon. was ladies day. Yep. And uh, yeah, so it, it is, it is very good. If you, if you haven't, it is really good. If you haven't done start. So there's, there's two 
uh, distilleries in Indiana that are actually doing great stuff. A lot of people don't know about uh, it's Starlight and I have a bottle over there from the other one, which is called French Lick. Uh, both are doing some pretty good stuff. Uh, which is funny because both started as wineries. Yes. Because French Lick has a winery. Yeah. And from <laughs> French Lick, what I, I get and I really love is their bottled and bond stuff. Uh, from Starlight, actually, I'm just now kind of getting into their bourbon. Uh, but what they do a lot of really cool stuff is finished uh, over at uh, Starlight. Mm -hmm. They're willing to just like, throw bourbon into whatever. Uh, and actually, I was I was telling prescription earlier uh, in the uh, the uh, live stream here that they are releasing three new uh, bottles coming up here in Saturday. Uh, so they got a rye finished in VDN uh, barrels. They've got a one finished in like. Tokyo, Tokyo, Tokyo. I don't know. What? Like, don't ask me. Oh. I can't. One, I'm an engineering teacher. I can't use the English language. Pronunciation yep. is difficult for him. Yep. Uh, and so it's, uh, I don't know what it is. It's a, if you would let me read it, I could. I, read I can it probably it. find it here on my on, yeah. on the stream. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they've got another one. Mm -hmm. So, that, but they're they're talking about it, and unfortunately, we're going out of town, so we won't be able to do it. Uh oh well there we go. <laughs> liquor he barn. logs in and he sees yeah, more I, stuff. I log in up. on Facebook and I get that liquor barn and Hurstborn, which is closed in five minutes, just released a couple bottles of blue run. So if, good luck. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna get there in time. I'm not gonna get there in time. Uh let's see. But the thing about Starlight, I think, is um they're not just tagging along with that finished thing that you mentioned, like they're very good at brandies. Yes. Um, and oh, so yeah. they're not, they're not trying to be like a Buffalo trace no. with their bourbons. Um, they like just being okay with the bourbon and then finishing it in a bunch of, you know, different things. I think they're kind of in this experimental phase right now and doing a really good job with it. Obviously this tastes delicious. Um, but the brandy. So as we mentioned before, I got the Applejack brandy, which we've done the tastings and the tasting loft, and we both really liked the Applejack mm -hmm. brandy. There's just something about it. That's just, it's, I don't know, like the, the fruitiness in it, but then also like the, the, the bourbon whiskey notes that are coming in alongside of it is really yeah. good. And um, for all you guys out there, just so you know, the tasting in the loft is the same for wine and whiskey. So you take your wife or your significant other yeah. that likes wine and you pay the same. And while she's drinking all the wine, you drink the whiskey. Yeah, it's $12, yeah. $12, which is really nothing. And it's um, decent pours and they've got a lot to choose from. So you do have to kind of narrow down what you want to do. But when you go, what they tell you, the tip is what we do. One does wine, the other does the spirits, and then you can just kind of sample each other's. Yep. Um, and then you hit up both because it is hard to choose. Because this time I was like, oh, I could do the spirits because those brandies are really good. Um, so, but I do still really like their wine. All right. So they're releasing uh, Saturday. <laughs> A Give me all the, the rye input. whiskey finished in VDN, which is a Spanish orange wine barrels. Ooh. They are doing a rye finished in rum cask, which is going to be new to their lineup. So it's going to be around more often, uh, which is an oh, four square for rum, which is a really good rum. I have four square rum over there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's an eight year rum from four square. And then they're going to finish it in that. And then I'll let her try to say the other word, which is a Hungarian wine. Togaji? There you go. Togaji. Which, why that's Hungarian? Togaji? Finish, uh, finished in Hungarian dessert wine barrels. Yes. Well, this sounds like something I'd be interested yep. in. It gets a unique smoothness and earthy character from the introduction of noble rot. Yep. Which they have to specify is way cooler than it sounds because it's rot. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Togaji. Hungarian dessert. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. We're going to have to look it up. Hey, Google, what's Togaji? Yeah. 
Yeah, James, I agree. The uh, the bourbon FOMO is uh, causing some crazy price hikes on a lot of stuff. Uh, the it used to be fifty, sixty dollars was standard, and now it's slowly creeping up over a hundred is standard. And then places like I know I said Blue Run, uh, and I would love to get a bottle of theirs, but I'm not gonna lie, that's two hundred dollars. So that's gonna be one of those I buy and just tell Chuck he owes me two hundred dollars, and then I try, <laughs> and then, and then he gets the bottle. Is is mm. is how those things work. Uh, so yeah, it would. Well, be, he's feeding into the FOMO a little bit. Like yeah. I'll say that for him. Um, I mean, he's dived into this pretty deep um, and wants to taste these things. So, yeah, yeah he doesn't want to miss out. So there are times when he comes home with things. I had to get this. Yep. Uh, okay. All right. But I will say every single bottle on the shelf, all 165 of them are open. <laughs> and if they do get open, people come over, I gladly share them. So and he drinks them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're all different, mm -hmm. which is the cool part. Like, uh, and she gets it because she likes wine and she likes good food. Uh, that's one mm -hmm. of the things we do enjoy doing is going yeah. to nice restaurants, which COVID kind of killed off. Uh, but we're we're getting it's coming getting back. back. Yeah. It's coming um, back. And so uh it's the same thing, which is like all the bourbons are different, and you get so much distinct flavors and everything like that. I will, I will adamantly say you have to get to that stage of your bourbon journey uh and if if, if you are just starting out on it it's all going to taste like a uh, turpentine and ethanol and all that crazy stuff but no there was a time where i couldn't even handle <laughs> uh what was uh woodford reserve i still have woodford. the bottle of woodford and down there i don't know if we've shared this story before but the eagle rare story yeah oh we have not shared that actually can we share it now but we'd have to i mean there's it. not a whole lot to yeah. share oh no it's a other great... than like he tried to drink it well hold on backing it up a little bit yeah let's do a pour first and we can okay what is this one don't worry so where we used to live in the condo down in the highlands in louisville yes there was a liquor store across the street mm -hmm. um and a great like small liquor store great place uh, where I got my first bottle of Weller. Right. That's Special. Where, right. <laughs> so not a lot, but like went in and started to make friends with the owner and asking some questions. So it is where he first started his bourbon journey um, at this little place. And they highly recommended he get Eagle Rare. Can you imagine? Like he's thinking, oh, Okay, Eagle Rare, fine, I'll get it. But this was back when, like, I was just there was gonna like say <laughs> 30 bottles of Eagle Rare on the shelf. This was seven years ago where uh, Blanton's was on the shelf, yeah, as right, we've mentioned it. before, that we were like, oh, we'll just pick up a bottle of Blanton's well, and the, bring yeah. it to the father in law. Yeah, the first bottle of Blanton's <laughs> I bought wasn't for me, it was for my father in law. Did you be like, here, please? enjoy my company have this bottle and dad if you're watching you know smart man he won you over right then <laughs> yeah. right there <laughs> yeah but the eagle rare as we tried uh, even though it was recommended we were like why did they recommend this we did not like it at first and part of it is getting over that high proof and that that um because it is a spirit getting over mm -hmm. the high alcohol content and um, so we just weren't crazy about it. And you all out there, I want you to understand, we really didn't know anything at the time, but we had all this Eagle Rare and I wanted to do a fun Thanksgiving for this guy. And we were going to be here in Kentucky and I wanted to do a Kentucky theme Thanksgiving. So you know what I did? I wanted to cook with bourbon. And I chose to use the Eagle Rare to cook with. I did like a, a basting sauce for the turkey and um, something else, maybe the gravy or something. Yeah. I was cooking with the bourbon and we chose to cook with Eagle Rare. I hope you all are cringing right now <laughs> as Ooh. I'm telling the story. It gets worse. Well, I mean, but that alone, like people can't find Eagle Rare easily. Yeah. And we were just like, psh, 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 Put it all in there, fill two cups worth and yeah. put it in. Um, well, we were putting it in saucepans over the stove 
and over the stove, needless to say, it, it caught uh, fire. Caught on fire. And so me now how do you put out flames grease fire because how i was like this is flames? not a normal water fire this is like a grease fire so through break baking soda on it whoosh, got bigger <laughs> not good so here i am and we lived in a condo at this time yep. like running through the hallway with yep. like a flaming thing <laughs> pot pot and like dumping it out on the the driveway uh so it dissipates <laughs> and everything like that uh yeah and then we we cooked with it some more but <laughs> then we still had about half a bottle left so this is this is the sad part this is where you'll you'll very much dislike us um tried it because we're like okay we're from kentucky we got to start learning to like bourbon tried it oh my gosh it was just pure alcohol absolutely terrible not good um we wound up like throwing out that half bottle of yeah. eagle rare yeah we didn't even finish the eagle rare yeah and it's so sad to even say now because i now understand eagle rare even better mm -hmm. and i'm like no because i also know how hard it is to get but that was one of the like back then like we didn't know any isn't better that, because there was like isn't tons that of ridiculous bottles. though it is ridiculous that in the time that we've been living here mm -hmm. because that's i we haven't been living here that long no i've been living here nine years um you've been living here eight yes and then, as I mentioned, he didn't really get into bourbon until we've been living here even a, a couple of years after that. Yeah. And things used to be like readily available on shelves. And now you have lines outside, not even distilleries, liquor stores. You have lines outside liquor stores. And that blows my mind because at liquor stores, you don't even know. Like at least at distilleries, you know yeah. what's coming out. Yeah. But at the liquor store, you're doing that as a chance. Even as yeah. a chance. So people are camping out for a chance. Mm -hmm. That's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. But I mean, whatever. He's part of it too. So <laughs> the, the camping out hasn't happened as much since COVID. So that's true. He hasn't ever camped. He used to do a lot of the, the early morning, yeah. like, 6 a.m. I'm gonna go out there and take my lawn chair and right. yeah, pre-COVID liquor barn was out. amazing, and they'd release like Saturday. We're releasing these six bottles, and so you knew like I needed to get there at like 6 a.m. They open at nine. You got a good chance if you really wanted to get like the super rare bottle, like 1 a.m. and enjoy the cold. Yeah, but at least I mean I am glad to say that while my husband has his hobbies, he also understands limits. And he's not going to do anything too super crazy stupid for his hobby. Like nope. <laughs> he still likes his bed and sleeping in, you know, preferable climates. Yes. And not like outside on concrete for over 24 hours yeah. in like 20 degree weather or something stupid. Now, I am willing to sleep out and we're going to try to get Chuck to join. And maybe we'll do a live stream from there because that would be amazing. It's <laughs> over Labor Day weekend uh, is when uh, Old Foe always releases their birthday bourbon. And my birthday bourbon is getting really low and she likes yeah, birthday bourbon. So I, I have permission to like camp out and try to get a bottle of birthday he, bourbon. He can. So he can. Uh, Mike asked, so I felt I had to get into bourbon. Yes. So me getting into bourbon is actually a different story. So one of the, yeah, they were kind of like two, there were two paths yeah. that kind of converged. Yeah. They, yeah. So her, uh, my in-laws, her parents decided, uh, who also watch the channel. So it'll be funny. Uh, <laughs> they decided that they really wanted to do the Kentucky Derby because now like we were, was it, were we married at that time or were we, yeah, we were. okay. So we, we were, were, we maybe were married. One year. Yeah. Maybe one year into our wedding. It, it was very early, but they decided they wanted to do the whole. Uh, well, because it was the year after uh, was an American Pharaoh did, yeah. the, did the Triple Crown. Yes. And, and they were like, oh, we are missing out on something. There is, you know, these beautiful horses that are racing and doing amazing things. We want to be a part of that. In that year that American Pharaoh won, I think um, that was 2015. So I think we went 2016. Like yeah. 2015, because they replayed it recently because they couldn't have Derby, you know, because mm -hmm. it's COVID and all. It had beautiful weather. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the horse ended up winning the Triple Crown. And so it was, it just looked mm -hmm. 
very beautiful. And so we bought into it and we're like, we got to do this. Got to be a part of this. And so got derby tickets the following year. And when yeah. you get derby tickets, you get a whole package. You get the Thurby and then Oaks on Saturday or uh, Friday. Yeah. And then you get derby on Saturday. So it was derby 143. So I bought the derby bottle for that year. And I forced myself every night to drink two fingers on just like a, a rocks <laughs> glass of uh, bourbon from this he, thing. And as he you thought see, the method was, I'm going to force myself to like this. It's how I got taught how to like beer from Chuck. Uh, Chuck is the <laughs> one who introduced me to beer, which was just drink beer. And eventually you'll like it, which... You know, I really like beer, even IPAs and all that crazy stuff. So I was like, oh, it's the same thing's got to work for bourbon. As you can see, I'm still not done with this <laughs> bottle. Uh, but yeah, so what I would do is I would just, and tater sticker, there's, no, it's just, it's just the derby sticker. Uh, so it was just, good old Woodford. Yeah, just good old Woodford, just sit there and I would drink <laughs> it every night and she would laugh at me because I had the she like, made the worst funniest faces. faces. Yeah, it was He cringed miserable. with each sip. But when we finally got to the Derby, and I, I won good money on betting that you day. Did. That was uh, Nyquist. Yeah. It was Nyquist year. Yep. Uh, I was uh, able to drink a couple mint juleps. And then <laughs> it all went downhill from I there. I also because was I able to drink <laughs> mint juleps, and I didn't torture myself every night mm -hmm. with the Woodford. <laughs> I just then, naturally yeah. liked mint juleps. And so so we, we slowly got into bourbon, and then the thing that – finally did us in is uh one thanksgiving because they again pre-covid they used to do that uh all the mm. local liquor barns uh, well a couple of them would do pappy raffles and so all you did is you got there uh before mm. nine o'clock and you got a wristband and they would randomly call out numbers and so our thanksgiving that we we went there or the day after thanksgiving uh <laughs> we took it was the two of us it was my her parents, parents and it, my it parents yeah. uh because we did a thanksgiving oh, yeah, here, at, here too. yeah it, that's right because we just bought the house <laughs> we just bought this place yeah and so we we, we had everybody in yeah. and so the liquor barn is like three blocks four blocks down the street and we're like oh what the heck we'll we'll, we'll do this uh and my parents don't really drink uh alcohol so i was like cool anything they win they get us and I kid you not, I won a Pappy 15. Her mom won a Pappy 15. Your dad. My dad won a lot B. Her dad won a lot B. Yep, and the very did. last number called because mm. she wanted to leave <laughs> was her number and she won an old rip 10. Uh, yes. And so what we did is like, so you, again, you can sell things. I was all ready to leave. Yeah. But think about those odds. You all, we went in the group of, let's see, her two, four, six, seven, maybe. We had a group of seven, and what, we were five out of seven? Mm -hmm. Five out of seven odds. Yeah. That doesn't happen. No. We know math and statistics. Yeah, so we were like, oh, I don't understand why. We got so super hard lucky. Yeah. Our first time, our first lottery yeah. we ever went to. And so what we decided, because we weren't super into bourbon at that time, like, we, we enjoyed it. And so in Louisville, there's a place called Justin's House of Bourbon. And the good thing in Kentucky is legally, I mean, there's always a secondary and all that crazy stuff, but legally any vintage spirit you can sell to restaurants or uh, other places. Uh, so Justin's House of Bourbon always takes stuff. And so I, I, we, we decided to, to go in the center and open the lot B, which is probably like looking back <laughs> at it now was a terrible decision because that was a low proof and we we're just getting into bourbon. So naturally we'd like low proof stuff. So we we're like, okay, we'll open the lot this B. Is amazing. If we like it, we'll keep all three bottles. If we don't, we'll sell the other two and we'll go on a wonderful vacation. Man, we opened Light that B lot so B good. and it was amazing. End of story right there. Yep. Yeah. It was good. And not only that, but like it it sold him on bourbon. Mm -hmm. Really. Like I just like there's bourbon and then there's bourbon. Yep. Like I don't know. You Which, all know what yeah. I mean when I say that. Like, there's your Woodford, and then there's these barrels from, yes, all these different corners of different rickhouses. Mm -hmm. Which, who knows what what label they're under? Because that's part of the thing that you like, mm -hmm. is finding these, like, weird name, like, unknown distiller thing. But, like, you got this corner pocket 
here in Kentucky where you had just the perfect weather changes to get like the yeah. most tasty bourbon out of this one barrel that's mm -hmm. now delicious that you can only enjoy this one time and then it's yep. gone. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about the hunt. Yes. Really, that's what it's all about. He mm -hmm. enjoys the hunt mm -hmm. the most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I also hunt and just buy for Chuck, even though. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, get that's buy. why he's okay with it. Yeah. He has someone else's dime yeah. to do the hunt. Yeah, with. actually, right now I've got a Sam Houston 15, <laughs> a barrel batch 29. I know we didn't tell them that was an option to a try. Discovery tonight. number five and a pursuit 44. Chuck would not be happy with all us. for Chuck, and I can't open it because you don't open another man's bourbon. That's yes. at least that's what Chuck keeps telling me. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Mike, I am the same way. That is the best, I love that. best <laughs> way of saying it. I don't have a drinking problem. I have a buying problem. It's one of those, like, you go into... I mean, can you see this collection? This yeah. is clearly a buying problem. <laughs> it's, it's one of the... I mean, it's it, they're all different. There's so many different flavors, and they're, they're delicious. And people that don't get into the hobby yet or are just starting don't completely understand it. And it's so much fun, though, when you got a friend come over... Who's like, oh, I like bourbon. And you just take them through the gambit. And you're like, oh, you try this, try that, try everything. And there's just so many things. Can we share what we're drinking? <laughs> I like it. Prescription just says, let Chuck open it or know. let Heather open Chuck's bottle. I'm afraid, though. I am a little afraid. Yeah, like, just, Chuck's scary. I know at the end of the day, like, who is Chuck going to forgive? It's going to be me over him, but I'm still a little scared. <laughs> Wait, what are we drinking, though? Because you said that was a mystery. You couldn't tell? No, it tasted similar to this yeah. one, so it was a Starlight one. Yeah. Because it still had, like, that banana thing going uh -huh. on. That's no, a I... cigar one. But it doesn't taste like it's in there. <laughs> okay, this is so weird. Yeah. All right. Can we tell them our original tasting notes? Did you get the same tasting notes? This tastes yeah, so different. I got very to me. similar. Yeah. This tastes really different to me. Okay. So what are you getting? I'm now? not getting nearly. So the first time I got a lot of cinnamon, and like immediately when I smelled the cigar blend, I got a uh, cinnamon toast crunch. Was all I smelled with the, mm -hmm. the cereal and cinnamon and sweetness. Cinnamon toast crunch, and then tasting it, it tasted like a cinnamon roll. Um, you know, like my mom's homemade cinnamon rolls right out of the oven. That's what it tasted like. And it was so delicious. But after probably after having some of these um, on my palate, I'm not getting nearly as <laughs> much cinnamon, but I am getting like the vanilla icing. Oh, yeah. That you would get yeah. from a cinnamon roll. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Okay. Mike, that is absolutely what I love to do. Uh, so that is on it. So uh, we released an episode not. I think Tuesday. Uh, so they had a Blanton store pick at Liquor Barn and I passed. Uh, we actually wound up going back later and grabbing a bottle and giving it to uh, her dad. Uh, Chuck and Brian gave me a hard time, but I'm, I'm a firm believer of like, I have a Blanton's and I have a Blanton's backup. So I don't need a third Blanton's. Uh, let somebody else Enjoy. walk into that liquor store find a bottle of blends and get excited. That's, that's, that's what I, I hope for, uh, and everything like that. And so, uh, but yeah, that's exactly why I have Blanton's on my shelf is because people come in and they're like, Oh, the pony, the, the grenade bottle. I, I want to try that and I let them try it. And then I'm like, okay, so that's really good. Like, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Blanton's is good. And then I'm like, here, try these other things that you can find. And they're just as good, if not better. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you liked it still? It still was good. Yeah, but it just it didn't taste the same, mm -hmm. which is interesting. I don't know. Uh, it's still yeah, yeah. It's not like I remembered it. Hmm. I remembered it being like this super sweet, and this wasn't as sweet this time. Do you think the because I had rye, this isn't tasting as sweet? It could be afterward yeah. mm -hmm. because rye with the spiciness, maybe that's leaving like an after yeah. effect. And mm -hmm. so yeah, this, the sweetness isn't. Well, and we've just had several. So your taste buds are going to be a little bit uh, like shocked. Yeah. yeah. 
So, mm -hmm. but we are going to have to take it to the lake and share it with your mom. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to share. No. All right. So thank you guys all for watching. We're going to log off here. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, mm -hmm. if you uh, have not hit like, and subscribe, please do that. And we'd greatly appreciate that. Uh, also, you know, uh, maybe I'll be able to talk my wife into joining us once or twice more here in the future. And yeah, we appreciate you fun. guys watching and <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks for having me. Yeah. See y'all.